Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Hey, today I wanted to read you a little article that came across, um, and I think that it's, I guess it's kind of a, a, a public service announcement, right? So as the PACT Act came out and all that stuff, this article, the, the title, the headline here from the Stars and Stripes uh, came out on May 16th, so a few days ago, three days ago, and uh, it says here, more than 250,000 veterans claims for PACT Act benefits completed since law enacted. So completed is different than, than submitted, right? So when you submit your claim, it might take a year before the VA actually gets it completed or fully adjudicated. Uh, so with that, uh, this uh, article was done by a guy named uh, Matthew Adams. And uh, let's read through it here and see what they are talking about. So, more than 250,000 claims from veterans for PACT Act benefits have been processed by the Department of Veterans Affairs since the law was enacted, agency officials told House lawmakers on Tuesday, so Tuesday of that week, I'm assuming. At this time, here's a quote, at this time across the agency, it has truly been an all-hands-on-deck effort to prepare for and execute on the delivery of the PACT Act. The VA Undersecretary for Benefits, Joshua Jacobs, told members of a House Committee on Veterans Affairs subpanel. The law signed by President Joe Biden on August 10th, 2022 is called the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, honoring our promise to address Comprehensive Toxics Act of 2022 or PACT Act. The law seeks to provide an easy path to health care and benefits for veterans who served near open air burn pits, which were used throughout the 1990s and the post 9-11 wars to dispose of garbage, jet fuel, and other materials. Other materials like that. Uh, veterans diagnosed with cancer, respiratory issues, and lung disease at young ages have blamed exposure to the toxic fumes for these or from these pits but the VA contended for years that there wasn't sufficient evidence to support their claims since the law went into effect in August Jacobs said the department has received nearly 575,000 claims and with about 280,000 claims completed according to the department's PACT Act performance dashboard. 251,584 claims have been processed with an 80% approval rating as of May 12th. So 80% approval rating is probably, or I'm sure that it is, meaning that they uh, gave some sort of disability rating to the veteran for the claim in which they filed could be a 0%, could be 10%, 50, 70, who knows. Um, so that means that 20% of the veterans uh, were denied for one reason or another. The law also improves the VA's workforce and claims processing to speed up efforts to meet the needs of veterans and establish 31 new uh, VA healthcare facilities in 19 states. Additionally, it expands healthcare eligibility to post 9-11 combat veterans and adds 23 conditions related to burn pits and other toxic exposures to the VA's list of service presumptives. Presumptive conditions, watch my videos on it, super important if you're not aware of what a presumptive is, Google search it, find, you know, there's many of us on uh, YouTube talking about presumptive conditions, so find somebody somewhere, me, anybody, doesn't matter very important that you get that information. However, so, uh, however, some lawmakers have concerns about VA employee training. The department's community outreach on how claims move through the system. Representative Luttrell from Texas, a, forming, a former Navy, Navy SEAL, that was hard to say, the chairman of the House VA Committee subpanel on uh, disability assistance and memorial affairs oversight said he is concerned about employees not learning from their mistakes made if the claim moves up the chain of command, but never comes back to the original person who started the process. Good call, good call. Everything, everything that gets appealed 
whether it's a higher level review and ruled in your favor, should go back to that original decision maker as a learning opportunity to train them on what right looks like. And then if it goes to uh, supplemental, still, you know, there's some stuff there, but you know, really, really it's those higher level review ones um, and also the Board of Appeals, uh, especially if it is under the way of, you know, look at all the evidence that's already in the file, it's all there, they just ruled incorrectly. So uh, Latrell makes a great point there. Uh, let's see, uh, a quote here says, that seems like we can tweak that a bit and make it more advantageous, he said. Jacobs said, and that's the undersecretary, Jacobs said he has asked for a wholesale review with the goal to have an answer to Luttrell by the end of the year. I can appreciate the challenge of trying to get something done in a short window, but I hate to think that if we wait until the end of the calendar year, how many claims will have issues, Latrell responded. I would ask the department to move on this uh, quickly. I just want to make sure we are set up here and the department and the department are doing what they need to be doing in order to prevent this. The VA has been encouraging all veterans and survivors of toxic exposure to file a claim for the PACT Act related disability benefits. Department officials said there is an upcoming deadline on August 9th. I did a video on this. If you file a claim for a PACT Act related presumptive condition, they will preserve your effective date as uh, August 9th of 2022. So if you file it today and it gets approved in 10 months, they will back pay you all the way to August 9th, 2022. This is when the law went into effect. You have a year. After that, that goes away. So don't miss out on that extra back pay. All right, so here going on, it says most veterans who file a claim or submit their intent to file a claim on or before 10 23 uh, will have their benefits if granted backdated to August 10th, 2022. Okay, whatever, August 10th, uh, when Biden signed the law into effect. That ends the article, but here's an important piece on that. If you hung on, if you file and if you don't already have an intent to file in place that that happened after august 9th okay so august 9th granted backdated to august 10th okay august 10th when biden signed the pact act into law if you filed an intent to file six months after that Okay, then you have a year from that intent to file. If you get awarded, it will go to that intent to file, then back another six months to that August 9th or 10th or whatever. So that's important. If you have not filed an intent to file since August 10th of 2022, and you think you're going to file a claim for a presumptive, but you're not ready for some reason because you're going to add some other things in there or what have you, file your intent to file now, and then that will preserve that effective date back to uh, August 9th, the day before he signed it into law. So um, again, it's just a way to leverage the back pay timeframes on this. So good information, and I just want to make sure you got it. So thanks again so much. I appreciate you, and remember, we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.